Hi, this is Dave Zwanis from Shapiro Mac, FightCollections.com. Uh, as you all know, I'm doing weekly videos uh, with to answer questions for all sorts of criminal related topics. Uh, I've been asked a few times now to expand on some of my other videos regarding refusing the breath test. Specifically, I've been asked to expand on the penalties for refusing. Uh, if you've seen uh, part one and part two, you already have a pretty good basis of what's going on here. And I wanted to kind of break it down because in the first video, I'm only speaking about a first offense. So I wanted to talk a little bit about a second or subsequent offense and also just give a little bit more details about some of the other penalties that you could be facing for refusing. Now, um, I've already advised you that the breath test will likely be the paramount evidence against you if you're charged with DUI. And uh, if you do not take a breath test, then, there will, th th then the other evidence will likely be your driving conduct and the field sobriety tests, which I've already advised you there is no penalty for refusing. Uh, conversely, there is a penalty for refusing the breath test, and the whole point of the videos was to illustrate uh, the details in regards to that penalty and why uh, that penalty essentially would not give you a enough uh, incentive to actually take the test. And, I'll, and I've written it up on the board. I want to go over it again. Uh, if you consent to a breath test and it's a first offense in Maryland, uh, you're facing a possible 45 days of license suspension if your result is between a .08 to a .14, if that's a first offense. Second offense, it would be 90 days. Now, the catch if your breath reading is a .08 to a .14 is that you can possibly get a modified license at the MBA, which allows you to possibly drive to work for the during the course of your employment, uh, to school, uh, to doctor's appointments, for, or any uh, obligation relating to alcohol counseling or awareness. If you take a, now this is where the stakes get a little higher, as I mentioned. If you take the test and you blow a .15 or above, uh, it's considered a hardcore DUI. And you are facing the possibility of losing your license for 90 days on a first offense and 180 days for a second. The catch is that the only way that you could get uh, the ability to drive if your breath reading is that high is if you qualify to have the ignition interlock system placed in your car. The ignition interlock system is like a breathalyzer that's put into your car. You could also win the hearing, as I mentioned, that's a whole different uh, topic. Now, if you refuse a breath test, you're facing the most serious sanction at the MVA. That is a possible 120 day suspension on your first offense or a possible year suspension um, for a second or subsequent offense. Same right. situation applies with the ignition interlock device, that it will likely be your only uh, remedy aside from the possible suspensions uh, if you qualify for it. Now, as I said on the other videos, this is usually the range that we see people in. Um, and as you see, the penalties are very similar at least for a first offense. And you could be facing a possibility of a slightly higher suspension at the MVA, but either way, the only way to drive is for you to get interlock, and that interlock period is for one year, not for the 90-day period or the 120-day period or the 180-day period. It's for an entire year to uh, get the initial suspension abated. So what Going back to the other videos, what I was saying was that to give a inference in the district court that you are uh, substantially impaired or even slightly impaired instead of facing the possibility of having one of these two penalties, uh, th that's, what you'll, that's the decision that you'll have to make. I'm just going to leave it up to you. I'm not going to you know, give my opinion on it. I'm just going to leave it up to you to, to decide. Now, I want you to also understand that you could face also additional criminal sanctions for uh, refusing a breath test. Now, the maximum penalty for DUI in the state of Maryland on a first offense is a year in jail, $1,000 fine, and a possibility of having 12 points put on your motor vehicle record. DWI, the lesser of the two charges, possible 60 days in jail, $500 in fines, and 8 points. Now, if you refuse a test, the state can file notice that under Transportation Article 27101X, your penalty can be increased by 60 days and $500 in fines, which means the year in jail becomes a year and 60 days, and the 60 days becomes um, four months. But the, the catch here is that these maximum penalty, these only come into play if you're convicted, A, and if you're completely maxed out on the penalty. For example, if, the, if a judge wanted to give you a year in jail, uh, 
you know, if the judge wanted to give you everything on a first offense refusal, the judge could then give you a year and 60 days as opposed to just a straight year. But that very rarely happens, that, that a judge would max a person out. And if you are in a position to be completely maxed out on sentencing, it means that you ha have probably a very bad record and, um, y you know, it, it would be, it would be uh, in one's best interest not to give uh, the state the evidence that they would need to convict. Now, I just want to run through quickly the, the, the scenario that will uh, often happen at the Motor Vehicle Administration. Um, I'm sorry, at the, at the police station relating to a DUI offense. A person would be arrested and they would be brought back to the station. Uh, they would then be advised that they have a right to either take or refuse the breath test. There's a form called a DR-15 form. It looks like this. You know, I know you can't read it from there, but um, the form indicates that you have the option to take the test, the option to refuse the test, and what happens is that either way, you sign this form indicating uh, s that you're going to submit or refuse, and then you are given a temporary license. That temporary license is good if you request an MBA hearing until that MBA hearing. So, you know, an officer should read through the DR-15 form, which will give this exact information that you have the right to take or refuse the test. Again, taking the test gives the state the evidence that they need to convict you. Uh, and refusing the test makes it so that the state will actually have to prove, based on the other evidence, uh, the driving conduct and the field sobriety test, uh, that you are substantially or slightly impaired. So I wanted to, uh, again, describe these things and let you know that the that part two of my first uh, DUI debate videos was related to a first offense, first of all, and uh, that there are some additional criminal penalties. I didn't mention them, mention them in the first video because, uh, again, they are, on a first offense, usually uh, not very relevant. And the reason for that is, is that you have to be convicted in order for these to come into play. And if you refuse, uh, you know, that it becomes more difficult to be convicted. And also, um, you would also have to be completely maxed out on sentencing to get an additional penalty. But I think it's very important for everybody to be well informed and to understand exactly what's going on you know, hopefully we don't see people that are in this range, second or subsequent DUIs. You know, a lot of, a lot of clients that we have uh, go out to have a couple uh, glasses of wine with, with a date or a beer with uh, a cheeseburger and they do something like speeding and then the next thing they know they find themselves charged with a very serious crime. Uh, by no means am I advocating drinking and driving. I personally do not drink any alcohol and drive because I've seen so many situations where people have difficulty judging their motor functions and they really don't realize how impaired they truly are. But the purpose of my videos is just to inform the public uh, the kind of the rules of what's going on. I think it's very important uh, for everyone to know the rules of the games that they play. And, uh, I, don't, and uh, I, uh, I appreciate everyone's comments and watching the videos. I've seen the fan page grow from the first video. Uh, like 350 fans since then. I really appreciate all the positive feedback I'm getting and I want to say that anybody who has any question uh, at all, I'd be happy to answer them via email or through the uh, fan page and uh, we are always available to help in any way possible. Uh, check out www.shapiromac.com, www.fightcollections.com. We have a uh, the fan page as you know, you're probably watching this video on the fan page, it's also connected to our news blog which can be reached through our, uh, our website. We're really trying to uh, make ourselves as available as possible. Our number is 410-884-6100 and we can be reached anytime. Thank you.